Thank you for joining me for this six part series. And uh, for those of you who missed it, I already put the overview up in part one. I'll have it at the end of this video if you missed it. But let's get into part two, which is a transit that kind of leaves you feeling like, what happened in my life? Okay, it's Pluto squaring natal Pluto. And um, as I mentioned before in the overview, uh, these transits that I'm going to be covering in this series occur between ages 41 through 43 and they last about, well this particular one lasts almost two years, okay, Pluto square and natal Pluto. And some people describe it as the opening shots <laughs> fired in the battlefield of the midlife crisis. So. Um, it can, in some cases, start out as something that seems devastating, okay? Or, in fact, is devastating. Um, external to you, an event of that kind that brings some kind of heightened awareness regarding your mortality. For example, it could be the death of an elder within the family. It could be the loss of a marriage, maybe through divorce. It could also be a serious illness coming up or maybe be in an empty nester for the first time. So however it plays out for you, it could play out in all manner of ways, okay? The, the end result is that you have a heightened awareness of how vulnerable you, you are and how fragile life is. And in some cases, it can leave you with a feeling that maybe life is pointless. Um, yes, that can be quite depressing for some people. Um, and as you reflect on your younger self, you might get a little bit jaded at the foolishness, right? To believe in um, lofty ideals or to have ambitions, um, maybe that we held in our younger years that we no longer think are too grounded, you know? And so, Sometimes what happens with this energy is that we try to do things, foolish things, to prove to ourselves and others that we're still alive, that we're still young, we still got this. <laughs> and the outcome of it, the outcome of the energy impacting you is that um, your, your life has changed, your consciousness has changed, and sometimes that change requires that you rebuild your life because Pluto is about, uh, you know, it's very intense energy. I mean, I can't make light of it. There's no way to sugarcoat Pluto energy. It's a very destructive, intense um, energy that, that oftentimes involves death, rebirth type cycles. So, trying to resist these changes is kind of futile. Uh, we're talking about Pluto here, but resisting these changes, although you might want to do it, you know, you might want to go out and do something foolish to prove to yourself and others that you're still young. <laughs> um, this could probably prove to be quite destructive. And so the, the point of it, the positivity of it is that, that Pluto is trying to awaken you to some realities. It is demanding that it not be ignored, okay? Um, and what you can't ignore is maybe some old behavior patterns. And Pluto is demanding that you cooperate in changing some of these old behavior patterns. And when you do that, then there's a lot of profound growth, right? You come into this rebirth cycle and this transformation that brings you into a new you. If you just kind of surrender to it and allow it and try to make the most out of it, right? To um, breathe new life into something, okay? Not necessarily raise it from the dead, um, old habits that need to die, right? But if you breathe new life, if you get um, a second chance to do things even better than before, then yeah, a lot of healing could happen during this transit. But I'm not gonna lie to you, this could be a time in your life that is quite jarring and even scarring in retrospect. Um, 
Now, this does usually happen in the early 40s because you know some of the planets are in faster portions of orbit. But if you're a millennial, if you were born 1981 through 1996, then it is possible that this transit is occurring in your late 30s. It could happen like around 36. So yeah, transiting Pluto is currently transiting personal Pluto at age 36 or 37 for millennials well before the midlife crisis. Okay, now that we've discussed what is happening, we need to discuss where it's happening. And right, the what is Pluto? There's destruction, there's intense uh, transformation, uh, death, rebirth cycles. But where is this happening? Well, you'll know that based on looking at your natal chart and your transit chart. So hopefully you've looked that up on astro.com. For those of you who haven't, um, you can look in the links down below. You know, your natal chart placement is going to tell you where you've been dealing with this, you know, for life. A lot of intense transformation and change and power issues in your life. But when it squares from ages 41 to 43, that would be in a different house. So just as a quick reminder of the houses, first house is going to be about your personality, your sense of self, your body, your physical vitality. Second house is about your values, your possessions, your self-worth. Yes, could be pocket money, things that you value and your personal property. Third house is more of about a local environment, your your neighbors, your siblings. It's also a communications house, how you communicate. And fourth house is home, family, sense of belonging. It can represent the mother, nurturing. Some say father as well, um, but I tend to associate it with the mother. But as we know, sometimes we have fathers that are more of a nurturer and the mother is more of the protector. So whoever was the nurturer in your life, that's fourth house. Fifth house, um, your you know, fun, dating, romance, creative things, children, childhood, whatever you find fun. And sixth house is having to do with your daily uh, work habits and health routines, uh, the things that you do on the daily, and it, sometimes it can include your pets as well. Seventh house is long-term committed partnerships, such as marriage, uh, business partnerships. It can also be very close relationships. Uh, sometimes they say seventh house is the house of your open enemies, <laughs> whereas the twelfth house is your hidden enemies. So... Um, yeah, it could be like school bullies, but also these could be your best of friends, okay? Eighth house, very platonic. So let me say this. In my example that I'm going to give next, I had uh, this Pluto squaring uh, Pluto, and it was aspecting my eighth house, okay, when I went through it. And so I'm going to say... This is like double platonic energy here. And if you are dealing with a square involving the eighth house, a Pluto square, I should say, involving the eighth house, doubly intense. And, and I'm going to give my example shortly. Uh, when you listen to it, please bear in mind that your situation may not be as nearly as destructive as mine. I, I hope it is not. <laughs> um but I'm just saying that this is this is a heavy hitting house here because it has to do with all things platonic, uh, death, rebirth cycles, extremes, right? Things that are very private, let me say, um, things that you don't talk about openly like death, taxes, sex, intimacy, other people's resources, things, shared resources, things like could be like spouse's income, um, inheritances, um, very private stuff here in the eighth house, but also very intense platonic stuff. Uh, moving on to the ninth house, I think this is um, an easier house to deal with. Um, 
not that Pluto is easy at all, but uh, for it to impact a ninth house, we'd be talking about, you know, your beliefs, religious beliefs, your morals, morality. It can also have to do with long distance travel, right? That's opposing third house, which is more short term, your no local neighborhood. Well, this is longer distance, okay? And it, it, you know, where this is about knowledge, this is about beliefs. Or this is about fa uh, facts, this is about faith. Moving on to uh, the 10th house, this has to do with, I usually say the father figure, the disciplinarian, the authority figure in your life. But yes, like I said earlier, sometimes for some people, that's the mother. But it's also about your career, your life purpose, destiny, what you want to do when you grow up. And sometimes status includes marital status, the legacy, the inheritance that you're leaving behind. 11th house is about goals, aspirations, ambitions, soulmates in some case, um, friendships, socializing, social media, networking things of that nature. And finally, the 12th house is a very spiritual house, right? The opposite of that is sixth, where this is, we're talking about the mundane. Well, this is the spiritual, okay? This is like, you know, the 3D versus the 5D, right? Um, also very private, hidden stuff, your secrets, the subconscious, your dreams, yes, even nightmares, could be hidden enemies, uh, people that you might have problems with that you, you, you're not aware that they're working against you behind the scenes, or you know that they are, but you can't figure out why. And also things that you like to do when you're in your private time, you're alone. And so that wraps it up. And hopefully for those of you who needed a reminder or need to understand how, how this Pluto energy is playing out in your life um, that explains it for you now i'm going to share with you a little personal for those of you who want to know what, what does this look like in real life okay <clears throat> when pluto was squaring um, my natal pluto which is in the fifth house um, it was natal Pluto in the fifth house square in the eighth house is what was happening there. So not an easy time in my life. Um, I lost my job. I lost because I ended up as a result losing my home. And uh, that was quite, um, right, you can't ignore that. That's quite a destructive thing in life. And... I want to mention that Pluto, you know, is very 8th house, okay, and, and for me this was occurring in the 8th house, so we're talking about two layers of intensity here, and 8th house has a lot to do with power battles. It has to do with other people's income, um, third parties, shared resources, sex, intimacy, and with it squaring the fifth house has a lot to do with fun, dating, romance, children, childhood. So uh, squares create a lot of tension and challenge. They are not easy. They are not easy at all. So um, when I lost my job, I had basically been taking care of my children. I'd been like the sole provider for my children. Things had been going really well, um, in, in, at least in the sense that I had just gotten a bonus, um, you know, on my job for ex meeting and exceeding expectations and um, had been in my home for almost two years, just holding it down with little or no support. Uh, and all of a sudden, you know, out of nowhere, I was fired over something that happened in my personal time um, over a social media post. I, I suspect it was because of jealousy um, 
I was well liked in the workplace except for my boss, another female, and um, there was just no reason, you know, and they just let me go. And there was no warning, it was just first strike you're out, which was unbelievable. You know, I, I never saw it coming. My friends and family were in, in shock, you know, that somebody could get fired for this type of thing. And, um, and then that culminated in me losing my home. And that was another shocking thing because I had been in that house for about two years and I had always paid my rent on time and full, never been a problem, no complaints from the neighbors. Um, we took good care of the property, and so all of a sudden, you know, I called my landlord. And I said, I'm, I'm going to be late on the rent. Well, he wasted no time in filing eviction on me. So I thought, well, okay, you know, I'm going to stop this from happening by, I'm going to hurry up and move out. He's got my um, deposit, you know, to cover the, the rent, so hopefully he'll let this go. and. I'll leave the house in good condition. You know, I cleaned it up really nicely. And I took pictures to make sure, you know. <laughs> and um, what do you know? He he didn't drop it. And so um, we go to court, and I'm totally moved out of this house. And he manages to evict me from a house I don't even live in. And I'm like, no, we should be fair and square because you had the deposit. And I left the house, you know, clean and the lawn mowed and everything. No, 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 no. He claimed property damage. And I had pictures and I told the, um, the judge, I said, no, no, that's not true. I have pictures. They wouldn't even bother to see it. They had so many other people in the court that day. They didn't have time for it. So, you know, they never even saw um, proof. And I was absolutely shocked, shocked that um, people will act this way and then they'll get away with it. And I know a lot of people around me felt the same way, like just astonished. And it the whole situation caused me to lose my faith in humanity because you, you would think that people would uh, be more graceful, they would be more gracious, but in reality, um, what I found is that if people perceive that you are in a position of powerlessness, they will exploit you. And it's like my landlord, he knew that I couldn't fight him in court and he just wanted me out of there, you know? And I think the same thing more or less happened with um, my, <laughs> sorry about the distraction. This more or less happened with my job situation. They knew that I had no way to fight them. I was in a, an at-will state, uh, work state, you know, where the laws here are such that an employer can fire you at any time for any reason, and legally they, they, they don't have to provide a reason. Legally they're protected in doing that, so there was just absolutely uh, no defense. And so when we go back to, you know, how Pluto was aspecting the eighth house power issues, other people's money, um, it was quite devastating for me. And yeah, it, it squaring the fifth house, impacting the fifth house, definitely impacted my children and their childhood. I would say, you know, it is a very pivotal point in my life and even my children's life lives that they that we will not forget we will not forget i i had to like actually p pack up all my stuff and put it in storage for a year i was displaced over this because um it was that destructive pluto is that destructive in the midst of this tear down of my life I really felt like, gosh, there is no justice in life. Life is not fair. And I also started looking around at, um, you know, my approach to life. And it very much changed. Because I used to be very outgoing and active on social media. Um, but 
I started noticing that uh, when you go through a major crisis in your life, um, you, you see where you really stand with people, okay? It, it reveals, they say, adversity reveals character. It reveals your real friends. And I noticed that when this happened, this destruction in my life occurred, a lot of people disappeared. A lot of people didn't have time for me. You know, um, like I was on fake book and I used to spend so much time on there uh, talking to people that I thought we were friends, right? Whatever that means on Facebook or anywhere these days, <laughs> you know, but I noticed that whenever I had this um, breakdown in my life that uh, these people just would keep scrolling. They didn't want to see or get involved or be a part of it. And you notice that a lot. Um, or if you haven't, you probably will. Live long enough, you'll figure it out that when you go through a very destructive time in your life like this, a lot of people do not want to get involved. Um, and they certainly don't want to put any skin in on the game. Um, that's like your problem type thing. And you, you start really seeing where you stand with people and that really sobered me up to a harsh reality that I needed to stop giving my time on social media to people who frankly wouldn't throw me a dime if I was living under a bridge, you know, with my kids. So um, what I did is I really changed. I um, started a business because I kind of threw my hands up in the air. I'm like, you know what? Why am I gonna work for people like this anymore? That job that I had, I was ruining my back, ruining my eyesight. Um, sitting in a chair looking at a monitor all day and um, had been going to chiropractors and all of this just so that I could you know do well on this job and I thought my god I've been killing my body for this job for these people to turn around and do me like this I'm not gonna if I'm gonna work hard I'm gonna work hard for my business not for somebody else and if I'm gonna be on social media it's to make my children money, not to profit some company, you know, some that's gonna do me like that and my children like that. So I really changed my approach with a lot of people and I kind of went into hermit mode where I was very selective with um, who I gave my time and attention to. And so, um, and it was a time also where I was trying to um, figure out, you know, where I needed to be in terms of working. So uh, it was me answering a call, you know, to advice from an astrologer that I had gotten about mm, maybe six months prior, I had an astrologer tell me, you know, you're not supposed to be working for people. And until you figure this out, you're going to keep running into problems working for other people, like dealing with jealousy. I've had two astrologers tell me, jealousy um, with women, from women and working with them. And that's something that I needed to, you know, and, and I have worked with women without that issue. It's not all women, but when it, when it does come up, boy, does it come up. And so I really started uh, restructuring my life, right? And this is the advice I wanna give you. If you're going through this issue of um, Pluto doing some major destruction in your uh, life, pay attention to where the destruction is and ask yourself, how can I restructure in a way that is in more, uh, is more in alignment with my true authentic self? If I'm not here, my life purpose destiny is not to be working for other people, but to be self-employed. How do I get that alignment? And trust me, that was not an easy task. Not easy at all. I mean, look, we're talking about a square here. <laughs> it's a challenge. It's not easy, all right? Um, and, and for me, in this situation, wasn't easy because I had three children to support and provide a home for, a safe home for, um, with little or no uh, support from their father and from my extended family. Um, so, you know, to try to start a business, a viable one at that, you know, and support my children nearly single-handedly was quite a feat for me to undertake. Yet, Pluto, square, natal Pluto, 
kind of forced this on me. And yeah, here I am, how many years later, working for myself, and I can't say it's been an easy road. No, it has not, but um, I've been self-employed since then, more or less. All right. Okay, so the next part that we're going to get into um, of this series, in case you're curious, is Neptune squaring natal Neptune, and it leaves you with a feeling of, how do I get the life I want? How do I get the life that I want? So we're going to talk about that in part three. Hopefully, we won't have all this back and forth with doggies. I'll get them situated. Um, but yes, if you miss part one, it is, I'll put it over here, part one, all right? And, um, and then uh, if you're watching way in the future, I'll put part two down here, okay? So y'all can, uh, I'm sorry, part three down here. So y'all can get to the next video. Part one, part three. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.